Hey, thanks for stopping by. This is Al and I. Lauren couldn't make it today, so Emily and I will be covering today's guide to Emerald Weapon Extreme. Hi there. Just wanted to say, feel free to flame us if any mechanics were explained incorrectly or if any strategy deployed in this guide was just plain stupid. In this fight, you may have trouble with the following mechanics. Aetheroplasm production, Tertius Terminus Est 1, 2, and 3, and lastly, full rank. <clears throat> oh, uh, yeah, uh, Emerald Shot, guys. It's uh, a single target tank buster. Optimize Ultima, a raid wide AoE. Aetheroplasm Production. Four yellow orbs will always tether to four blue orbs. The goal is to explode all the orbs before they reach the center. Players must explode each pair of orbs at roughly the same time, and players cannot soak the same color orb twice. To handle this, you can break the party into two groups, with group 1 starting on the east side and group 2 on the west, or vice versa. Then just run together as a group clockwise or counterclockwise soaking up all the orbs. This is known as the 4x4 strategy. You can also break the party up into four groups. This strategy is also known as the 2-2-2-2 strat. Emerald Beam plus Photon Laser. You want to stand a bit in front of the arrow and then dodge out, then in. Out. Then in. Magitech Magnetism and Photon Burst. To handle this mechanic, the tanks just need to quickly locate the unpaired bomb and stand on the opposite side from each other. This does deal a lot of damage to the tanks, so mitigate accordingly. Everyone else just needs to locate the paired bombs, which will always have the same charges, meaning they will repel each other, providing a safe spot. Magitech Magnetism 2. Emerald Weapon spawns five bombs this time. One pair with the same charges, one pair with opposite charges, and one by itself. Just look for the pair with the same charges to locate the safe spot. Another round of Emerald Beam and Photon Laser. Optimize Ultima, another raid-wide AoE. Notice his floating hands. This will indicate Bitstorm, a no-cast bar donut AoE. This is quickly followed by Divide at Impera. Have the off tank stack with the main tank and everyone else make sure to spread out. Split. Emerald Weapon disassembles his upper half, leaving his bottom half behind. The bottom half will cast Expire, a circle AoE in the middle of the stage. The top half will shortly blast down Air Tamstorm, a large expanding AoE appearing on a random side of the stage.
Next, he will try to fool you with his floating arms, but he will put his arms back in and instead use Photon Ring, a large circle AoE. Dang, this gets me every time. Yeah, same. Sneaky bastard. Magitech Magnetism 3 plus Pulse Laser. Handle this the same as all the Magitech Magnetisms, but this time a healer and a DPS will be targeted with a line AoE that should be baited before entering the safe zone. The last optimized Ultima. The last raid-wide AoE. If your DPS is a bit low, you may encounter another Bitstorm, the No Caspar Donut AoE, so watch out for that. Hi there! Welcome to Phase 2 of Emerald Weapon Extreme. This phase is now the new save point until the lockout. Divide at Impera targets the main tank with a tank stack marker, which should be mitigated and shared with the off tank. The rest of the party will be targeted with small conal AoE, so spread out accordingly. Primus Terminus Est places an arrow on all healers and DPS with a very strong knockback in the direction indicated by an arrow. Players cannot use knockback immunity here, but they can use their gap closer during the knockback animation to cancel it. To handle this, Players should stand as close to the edge as possible to account for the knockback. Also, be careful not to clip the two tanks in the middle or each other. Tertius Terminus Est This mechanic can be a bit difficult for new players. Emerald Weapon summons two swords in three sequences that will deal large cross-shape AoE in the order that they spawn. What makes this mechanic confusing is that the AoE explosion can take on the form of an additional sign or an X. You must take into account the order in which the swords drop as well as the orientation of the cross AoE. A lot of players look at the last set of swords and move back into the first sword to handle this mechanic. I will show you all five patterns, from my point of view and the thought process. Pattern 1. The first sword is a plus sign shape, so we just need to stand around here to avoid the AoE. Again, we are ignoring all the other lines. Once it explodes, we quickly move in. Pattern two. The first sword is an X this time. We just need to stand around there to avoid the X shape AOE. Again, we have ignored all the other lines and quickly moved in. Pattern three. The first sword spawns in the middle this time. Pattern four is the same as pattern 5. This last one is a bit difficult, but the same concept. So we just need to stand in the small spot here to avoid it and move in. Junebob also created a great short animation video explaining this mechanic, and the link will be in the description. Legio Phantasmatis in the add phase, try to deal as much damage to the image as possible, as this damage will be transferred to Emerald Weapon when he reappears. You will also need to pay attention to the airship and their numbers, as they will begin to shoot circle AoEs across the stage in ascending order. After dodging the AoE, carefully walk back towards the center of the stage. Standing directly on top of the white X marker in the middle will ensure that you do not get knocked back onto the death wall regardless if you're positioning towards the corner or not. Optimized Ultima, a raid-wide AoE.
another round of divide et impera. Position accordingly. The second tertius terminus est can be one of two patterns depending on which part emerald weapon leaves behind, with the other pattern always appearing in the next tertius terminus est. If emerald weapon leaves behind his top half, he will use slidescape, a half-stage AoE, visually indicated by the lights on the shoulder, and blasting down the stage with a raid white knockback. At the same time, tertius terminus est swords will spawn. To handle this, just look for the last sword to drop and just get knocked towards it and walk back towards the boss. Legio Phantasmatis and Full Rank The goal here is to look for the ship with a number 4 or a number 5 closest to the soldiers and stand in that lane to dodge incoming lines of fire. Once the soldiers converge, look for the two empty spots and dodge accordingly. Don't worry, there's only two patterns to the airships. Secundus Terminus Est marks the tanks and DPS with Tertius Terminus Est AoEs. This mechanic is easily handled by having players with the plus signs drop them off close to the corner, and players with the X in the cardinal direction. This will create a safe spot in the middle. Tertius Terminus Est 3 The last round of Terminus Est will deploy the last remaining split pattern from the fight. If Emerald Weapon leaves behind his bottom half, he will use Expire, a large circle AoE. He will then deploy a large circle AoE that will expand in a few seconds and summon Tertius Terminus Est swords at the same time. To handle this, just avoid the expanding AoE and move into it. This ensures you will dodge all the swords at the same time. You have now seen all the mechanics in this fight. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Thank you very much for watching, and good luck! Oh, hi there! Hmm, I guess I missed the whole fight. But in time for a summary? In short, Emerald Weapon Extreme will test your ability to move quickly while paying attention to your surroundings. In the first phase, Aotheroplasm production requires players to coordinate with each other to blow up all the orbs before they reach Emerald Weapon. In the second phase, players must learn to read Tertius Terminus Est AoE placement and dodge accordingly. Lastly, Full rank requires players to avoid the line of fire from both the soldiers and the airship. Thank you very much for watching, and have a nice day.